The head is divided into quite a few regions, and these regions are in turn grouped into either regions of the neurocranium or regions of the viscerocranium. Let me draw a line on our nice image of the skull here to show you roughly where this division occurs. So above the blue line we have the neurocranium and below it we have the viscerocranium. So essentially the neurocranial portion of the skull protects the brain and the viscerocranial portion forms the face. So first let's look at the neurocranial portion of the regions of the head. These regions are named according to the underlying bones with the exception of the auricular region which we'll discuss later on. As you can see here, the first region of the neurocranial portion that we'll talk about is the frontal region. This region is situated at the front of the head, overlying the frontal bone, and encompasses the area of the forehead. If we look at another illustration, we can see that the frontalis muscle, now highlighted in green, is also found in this region. The next region of the head that we'll look at is the parietal region, which refers to the area on either side of the head that overlies the parietal bones of the skull, as you can see indicated by these arrows here. Now if we flip our skull to view it from above, we can see the parietal bones much clearer and that they're roughly square in shape. Moving on, we can see the temporal region of the head, which is also located on either side of the head, but below the parietal region as shown by our arrows here. This region of the head overlies the temporal bones of the skull, and if we flip our skull to view it from below, we can see the temporal bones a bit better, and how they contribute to the zygomatic arches of the skull. The fourth region of the head is the occipital region. This region is located at the back of the head and is the region overlying the occipital bone of the skull. Note that the frontal and occipital regions of the head overlie unpaired bones of the skull in contrast to the temporal and parietal regions of the head which overlie paired bones of the skull. Next we have the auricular region which you can see here highlighted in green. In the neurocranial portion of the head, the auricular region is the only region that's not named after the bone or bones it overlies. Instead, the auricular region refers to the region around the ears. This region includes the external ear, which is composed of the auricle or pinna, and the external acoustic meatus or canal. So next, let's look at the regions of the head found in the area of the face or the facial region. We call this the visceral cranial portion of the head. These regions of the head situated in the facial region are named according to the related superficial features, deep tissue formations and skeletal features. The first region that we'll talk about is the orbital region. This region is one of five bilateral regions of the visceral cranial portion of the head and if we remove the surrounding muscular tissue we can see that it includes several structures. We can see the eye socket here, also known as the bony orbit, and the soft tissue organs within it, such as the eyeball, which we can see here, and these muscles surrounding the eyeball, which are the extraocular muscles. Other structures include the eyelids, the eyebrows, and the list goes on. From our image, we can also see that the orbicularis oculi, the circular muscles you can see around the eyes, highlighted in green, are also found in this region. Moving on, we can see the infraorbital region, which is also one of the bilateral regions of the face. Now, if you don't know what bilateral means, it simply means that this region is paired and it's located on both sides of the face. So you have a left infraorbital region and a right infraorbital region. Now, as the name suggests, this region of the face is located just inferior to the orbit. The third of the five bilateral regions of the face is the buccal region. This is the region of the face situated above the buccinator muscle, which we can see a bit clearer if I remove some surrounding soft tissues. So you can now see the buccinator muscle highlighted in green. Now that you've seen it, let's go back to our image of the buccal region, which essentially refers to the area of the cheeks. As you can see in the next image, the parotid region is the region of the face that overlies the parotid gland. If we change orientation slightly and view the face from an anterolateral aspect, we can see the parotid gland a bit more clearly. As you can see, this region is located just below the ear and it's also one of the five bilateral regions of the face. 
The fifth and final bilateral region of the face is the zygomatic region. This region of the face overlies the zygomatic bones and muscles. And if you have a look at the image on the right, you'll see that I've roughly outlined these muscles for you. The zygomatic region is the area of the face where we find the so-called cheekbones. Now that we've seen the bilateral regions of the face, let's look at the regions of the face situated along the midline, starting with the nasal region. This region is named after the nose and as such includes it. The nasal region of the face comprises structures that are both important for breathing and olfaction. The next region that we're going to see is the oral region of the face, which refers to the area of the oral cavity. This region, of course, includes the oral cavity itself, as well as structures such as the teeth, the tongue and the palate or the roof of your mouth. The final median region of the face that we'll look at is the mental region. The word mental doesn't only relate to your state of mind, but also refers to structures relating to the chin. In other words, this region is basically the area of the chin. This is the region of the face that overlies the mental protuberance, which we can now see highlighted in green. So you'll be pleased to hear that we've finally covered the regions of the head, both those found in the neurocranium and those found in the visceral cranium. If you found this quick anatomy video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.